in the fullness of time, love, mercy, came from heaven to earth. Because we had all fallen, become a wounded race because of original sin and then our actual sins. But God himself became man. And it was only done by the consent of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our Lord was given flesh only when Our Lady consented to give him flesh. And before God would take Mary's son, our Messiah, out of this world at the crucifixion, once again, he asked for her consent. And that is why they say that God did not take Mary out of this earth before Christ's crucifixion because she was to play such an immense role in our redemption. She is the mediatrix of all graces. She is the co-redemptrix along with our Lord who is the Redeemer. But by her standing, as it says, stavat juxta cruce, stavat. She stood at the foot of the cross all the while watching as her son died suffocating and dripping with blood because she had to give her internal consent before God would take her son away. And so she is truly the co-redemptrix. And that is why we should love her so much she thought of us during all of that. But imagine today the sorrows of Our Lady. We won't go through all seven of them, but imagine. She had the faith. She saw it more clearly than anyone else could ever have seen it, any other mere human being. She knew of the sins of mankind. She knew of the Messiah. She knew that it was us that caused her son to have to suffer. So when she saw the passion beginning and the mob of people that our Lord had come to save and was about to give up his life freely for them, to shed every last drop of his blood for those who cried out, crucify him in hatred, in jealousy, in envy, She stood by him the whole time. But the mob was crying out, crucify this man. We don't want him as our Messiah because he does not promise us riches and the restoration of Israel, which we so want. It's exactly what they cry out today against the church and all the enemies of the church, which is the mystical body of Christ, crucify it. And that's precisely what they're doing to our church ever since Vatican II, crucifying it, putting it to death as much as they can and all the while seeking after their own pleasures because they don't want to be saved from their sins. They want their wealth and their video games and all the things of the world that can give them pleasure. They are just like the Pharisees and the Jews of old that pray out, crucify him. But Mary was in, that, in the middle of that mob listening to all this. And you have to imagine what her love must have been. The Blessed Mother's love for God. She was sinless. She had nothing holding her back. Nothing dividing her love. You and I, we all have some attachment to a person, a place, a thing. And it divides our love. We don't love our Lord as much as we should. But Mary had no attachments. Her only attachment was to God. And she stood there, listening to the crowd, shouting out to crucify her God. And not only her God, but her son, who lived in her womb for nine months and grew up in her home for 30 years who she spent those 30 years in intimate conversation with. And you can imagine the things that are not written in the Gospels 
that took place in Nazareth between Jesus and Mary. Imagine the conversations and the prayer time that went on and the love that grew between mother and son, between God and creature. And there she was in the mob listening to them to crucify her very own God and son. And yet not a peep out of the sorrowful mother, but her heart must have been breaking, so much so that they say, if you were to take Our Lady's sorrows and divide them up until each man, woman, and child that ever did exist and ever will exist were to divide up and give each of them the equal proportions of that sorrow. Nobody would survive it. Everyone would die. All that sorrow was built up in Our Lady's heart and she was given an extreme grace to be able to withstand all of that sorrow in her motherly heart. But she watched as they bound him in cords. She watched as they threw a cross over his shoulder. And as he could no longer carry it up the hill of Calvary, he fell to the ground three times. She watched as they flogged him and beat him and spit upon him. And not a word. She kept it all in her heart, remembering that it was for God's glory and the salvation of man that all this was being done. And when finally Simon of Cyrene came to help our Lord carry the cross, what gratitude must have filled her heart at that moment for a Cyrenian. They carried the cross up to Calvary, and finally Our Lady was allowed to approach but not before she watched her son being nailed to a cross. Picture that. Picture the sorrows of Mary, how each blow of that hammer was a blow to Mary's heart. It was a total blow to Our Lady's heart, and yet she did not turn away She did not wail and and cry in fits of tears and sadness. She stood there. Stava juxta crucem. Mater dolorosa. The sorrowful mother stood by the cross. And as they pulled him up with ropes and let the cross fall with a thud into the ground, she watched as her son, tied to the cross, fell in. Imagine the pain that our Lord must have experienced when the cross hit the ground and he was hanging simply by nails. And she watched it. And for three long hours, all she could do was look up to the God of all consolation for consolation. And yet it says that she found none because it was our Lord that she looked to for consolation. And now... He was the cause of all of the sadness of her heart. So there was nothing but sadness in her heart. But she stood there all the time for three hours, watching the blood drip down in streams from our Lord's wounded body. And she watched him with dislocated shoulders. She watched him suffocate. For three hours. For three long hours. She watched it all. Stava juxta cruce. She stood there. Like a brave and courageous mother. The litany that was read before Mass today says it all. Mother crucified. Tearful mother. Afflicted mother. Forsaken mother. Desolate mother. Mother bereft of thy child. This is the sorrowful mother that we honor today. But what is it that gave her the courage and the fortitude to stand by the cross when any other mother could not have taken it and would have had to turn their back and walk away for grief? It was the fact that she knew that her son was doing this for all mankind. When she brought 